On Friday, my favorite poet turns 200 years old. Walt Whitman. Honestly, how could you not love Walt Whitman? For one thing, he's pretty raunchy. Even by today's standards, the lines, Limitless, limpid jets of love, hot and enormous, quivering jelly of love, white blow and delirious juice. <clears throat> Almost too descriptive. Though Durex should totally be using the term quivering jelly to refer to the thing that its product catches. Though who wouldn't be raunchy when you look like this? Hi there, Walt. Looking, looking good. This is actually the photo of Whitman that kicks off his most famous work, Leaves of Grass. In it, Whitman is all about the salt of the earth, the common people, the natural world, the uniqueness of every single human being, and of course, the beauty of our bodies. As a result, the whole thing's pretty fucking sexy. And so even when old Whitman could get it. Hot literature rumor has it that famed English writer Oscar Wilde once traveled to America and uh, sang Whitman's body electric. Like, to be clear here, Oscar Wilde would have looked like this, and Walt Whitman would have looked like this. And still Wilde was like, <laughs> oh daddy. Actually, what Wilde said was, I have come to you as one with whom I have been acquainted with almost from the cradle. Hmm. Kinky. Whitman was so enchanted by the body, so enamored with it, that he's actually one of the most photographed people of the 19th century. In fact, he might be one of the first people ever photographed nude. And did this when he was old! Yeah. Okay. I get it, Oscar Wilde. But really why I love Walt Whitman is his earnest belief in democracy and his love for America and all that it still strives to be. The story goes like this. In 1844, Ralph Waldo Emerson publishes The Poet in his second series of essays. In this essay, Emerson calls for a uniquely American poet, one who knew, quote, the value of our incomparable materials. Ten years later, a 35-year-old Walt Whitman reads this essay. One year later, in 1855, Leaves of Grass first hits the shelves. It is raw, explicitly abolitionist, very gay, and unlike anything the world has seen up until this point. It sells very poorly. Whitman, who paid for the publication of this first edition by himself, then writes three anonymous and extremely positive reviews of Leaves of Grass in an attempt to drum up sales. This works. It sells better. Emerson and the other transcendentalists love it. Love it. It gets a second printing with some additions. It gets a third and a fourth for a grand total of eventually nine editions. This slim volume of just 12 poems eventually swells from looking like this to something like this. Somewhere in there, Civil War breaks out. Walt Whitman travels to Washington, D.C. and spends two years in army hospitals taking care of wounded and dying soldiers. These hospitals would have had the old and the young, the black and the white, the Union and the Confederate. But Whitman cared for them all the same. He even often wrote these long, moving letters to families of the deceased in the hopes of giving them a sense of peace. I think about Walt Whitman a lot, particularly right now. Whitman's poetic vision is that it is our differences that make America so special. We are a nation of laborers and immigrants. We have different dialects and cultures, different dreams, different ideals, but we are all also the same, and we are also all equal. The undocumented field hand, the teenager with his hood up, and the rich businessman are all irreplaceable, and they are all unique. Whitman's most famous poem, Song of Myself, opens with this. I celebrate myself and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Walt Whitman loved us Americans in a way that I'm not sure anyone else has ever again. His original self-published Leaves of Grass opens with a long prose introduction. It remains one of my favorite things that he ever wrote. The genius of the United States is not best or most in its executives or legislatures nor in its ambassadors, or authors, or colleges, or churches, or parlors, nor even in its newspapers or inventors, but always most in the common people. Their manners, speech, dress, friendships, the freshness and candor of their physiognomy, the picturesque looseness of their carriage, their deathless attachment to freedom, their aversion to anything indecorous or soft, or mean. The practical acknowledgement of the citizens of one state by the citizens of all other states. The fierceness of their roused resentment. Their curiosity and welcome 
of novelty. Their self-esteem and wonderful sympathy, their susceptibility to a slight, the air they have of persons who never knew how it felt to stand in the presence of superiors. The fluency of their speech, their delight in music, the sheer symptom of manly tenderness and native elegance of soul, their good temper and open-handedness. The terrible significance of their elections. The president's taking off of his hat to them, not they to him. These two are unrhymed poetry. It awaits the gigantic and generous treatment worthy of it. And that treatment was Leaves of Grass. Friday Whitman's actual birthday, Jess and I are going to be reading some of our favorite poems. For anyone who's never heard Walt Whitman poems before, or fans who wouldn't mind hearing them again. Thank you.